Welcome to the broadcast of Exceedingly Abundant Ministries in cooperation with Bethel Worship Center of Joplin, Missouri. Their goal is to win the lost, disciple Christians, set the captives free, and see the sick made whole. Bethel Worship Center is located at 3125 West 20th Street in Joplin. Weekly service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and a Wednesday evening Bible study at 6.30 p.m. For more information, visit their website at BethelJoplin.org. Now, here's Pastor Gary Culp with today's message. Well, good afternoon. The Lord bless you. What do we know for sure? God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Let's pray for souls. We want everyone to go to heaven, right? So, Father, we're crying out to you for the eternal salvation of every boy and girl, man and woman in Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, their past, present, future spouses, all the children they have now in the future and their family members, all grandchildren they have now in the future and their family members, all great-grandchildren they have now and in the future and their family members. By faith, we're sending the Holy Spirit to convict each person of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Lord Jesus, we ask that you'd reveal yourself to each person, your incarnation, your perfect life, the great miracles you did, your death, burial, and resurrection, your precious atoning blood, the revelation and understanding that by your stripes we were healed. We come to every boy and girl, man and woman. And Father, they'd humble themselves before you. They would repent of their sins. They would receive you, Lord Jesus, as Savior and Lord, and be gloriously born again from above. And then, Father, you give every person to a good Bible, believe and teaching church. They would then be baptized in water, receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Every Christian would become a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're praying for every demon-possessed, demonized, and captive person to be set free, and all the sick to be healed from every sickness and every disease. And, Lord Jesus, for your people to receive and to walk in financial abundance, prosperity, debt cancellation of their debts, the full blessing of Abraham, whom God blessed in all things. So we agree for that right now in Jesus' name. But also, Father, we love the Jewish people. We have such a great debt of gratitude. We pray, Father, that the scales and blinders will fall off their hearts and minds, and they would see that Jesus Christ is their Messiah, that He is Savior and Lord, and they would be born again from above. In agreements with the Word of God, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And also, Father God, we agree that they have an eternal covenant to all the land of Canaan. So we pray, Father, you restore all that land to them, Father God, that your Word says that they have. And Father, protect them in the upcoming Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 30, 39 wars. Again, give them your victory. And, and Father, protect them from their enemies. And Father, we pray that the United States will protect and watch over and be a blessing to Israel, Father. And we thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. You know, also, there are so many wicked things going on in the world today that if somebody doesn't come against it and pray against it, you know, God answers prayer. So these things we're getting ready to pray, we're praying because God wants us to take a stand against evil. So here we go again. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Father, we pray against this digital currency that the Fed and Joe Biden are trying to roll out. Father, it's from the pit of hell. They're trying to bring forth a one world government. And Father God, the mark of the beast, we come against this right now in Jesus' name. We pray that you'll send their plans into confusion and derision. They will fight among themselves. They will not be able to come into agreement. And you will cry out, raise up millions of people to cry out against it in Jesus' name. Also, Father, we agree there's not going to be any more viruses. Father God. Father, destroy all those labs that are right now creating viruses to be released to kill people, Father. We come against this. Just like the other one was a man-made virus, we pray you destroy all those viruses, and we agree that no Christian is going to get any of those viruses in the future. In fact, by faith, we command our immune systems to be strong, healthy, and whole, and to repel and destroy all sickness, disease, and pain, no matter what it is. And Father, we pray that you would secure our borders. Father God, you know that there's foreign soldiers, terrorists, pedophiles, drug dealers, terrorists coming through our borders to destroy America and do evil. We cry out, Father, that you would raise up law enforcement and you would send your powerful angelic host to drive out of this country every person who has come illegally. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. 
And Father, please protect our power grid. Don't let anybody uh, send any of those EMPs. Don't let let them take out our electricity, our gas, our oil, our coal in any dimension, Father God. May we continue to be able to drive our cars and heat and air our houses with no problems whatsoever. Also, Father God, you know the great wicked evil that has come against your servant Donald Trump and his family and against conservatives and against Christians. Father, you have reminded us by the Holy Spirit of the book of Esther. Father, we are the Mordecais. We agree that you will continue to watch over us and protect us. We agree that you will provide for us in abundance even in these last days. And then just like with Mordecai, you will promote us even in this day of evil. But also, Father, you know who the Hamans are who are trying to destroy and kill us. We agree, just like in the book of Esther, you are going to hang all the Hamans in the very gallows that they have prepared for us. And we thank you for it. Thank you for your divine justice. And Father, we pray for sexual purity in kindergarten, in grade schools, in junior high, in high schools, and college. Father, it will be taught and the understanding will be that the only sexual relationship that is acceptable to you is one man and one woman in a marriage covenant. And we agree you will destroy all the perversion and the transgender agenda, which is from the pit of hell. Destroy it, Father. Bring forth your judgment and remove every person out of their place of authority that is trying to kill and destroy our children. And also, Father God, we pray that you would not allow them to put any more of the mRNA material into our food, our water, our plants, or our animals. And for all these things, we will give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to talk about apostasy. We are living in the last days. Jesus is coming soon. The next great event on God's calendar is the rapture, the catching away of the saints. And then what's going to happen then? Well, the Antichrist will come out of hiding. He will sign a seven-year peace treaty with Israel. Beginning in Revelation chapter 6, God begins from heaven to bring judgment on Satan, the Antichrist, his followers, those who have rebelled against God. At the same time, he will still be having people who are sharing Jesus. He will have two witnesses in Jerusalem. Many think it's Elijah and Elisha or Elijah and Moses. They will be preaching. They will be winning souls to Jesus. And if anyone tries to touch them, the judgments of God, they will release with their mouth and they will be protected and people will be taken out who are trying to harm them. But also the Antichrist will be bringing great destruction. He'll try to bring forth his one world government. In the middle of tribulation, he will receive a deadly wound. It seemed like he will be miraculously raised up again. Probably at that point, he will literally be completely demon possessed. He will go into the temple. Remember something very exciting that's going on right now is the Jews finally, after hundreds of years of their temple being destroyed, are ready now. They have all the materials. They have the high priest. They have the garments. They are ready to build their temple again. Isn't that exciting? It's not exciting that they're really building the temple again. It's exciting that God's word is true and what he says comes to pass. So in the middle of the tribulation, the Jews will think, because he signed the seven-year peace treaty and they're doing their sacrifices in their new temple that they've built, that he's a wonderful guy. But then all of a sudden reality ha- happens. <clears throat> he goes into the temple in the middle of three and a half years, having received that deadly wound, being fully possessed by the devil. And he will stand up and say, I am God, worship me. Well, needless to say, the Jews say, oh, no, he's not a good guy. He's a bad guy. And they flee into the hills and run. In fact, many God will hi- hide out in a place we know as Petra. But then, oh, that's when the mark of the beast comes. That's when he'll, uh, you'll absolutely have the one world currency, and you'll have to take the mark of the beast, and you will not be able to buy and sell. And remember, if you take the mark of the beast, you are eternally damned. You cannot go to heaven. You automatically go to hell. In fact, many people think that the mark of beast will literally make you where you're not human anymore. 
And do you know with the things they're doing with uh, CRISPR and gene splicing, they're already min min mixing human and animal DNA. Did you know that? There's a lot of terrible experiments going out there, out, out there that we don't even know about. But again, that thing's getting ready to happen. And then at the end of the tribulation, you and I, who are saints, who are born again, we've been in heaven. We've been enjoying the marriage supper of the Lamb. Probably have gone through the judgment seat of Christ, and we've received our rewards for our faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray you are being faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. But then we will come back with Jesus at the end of the tribulation, Revelation 19, on white horses. <clears throat> Jesus will open his his mouth, literally all those who have taken the mark of beast have literally rose up to come against Jesus, will be slaughtered, and Jesus will then establish on planet Earth a thousand-year rule of, rule of Christ on Earth. It's called the millennium. <clears throat> then at the end of the millennial, at the end of the millennium, Satan, who has been bound for a thousand years remember he gets bound when jesus comes back he will be loosed well you say well, why would why would that happen well <laughs> the reason that is happening is because you and i who are alive who have been raptured out of here we will come back in glorified bodies but there will still be people here on earth when Jesus comes back, that didn't take the mark of the beast, didn't sell their soul to the devil, and they will be in human bodies, and they will repopulate. And they will be literally under the rule of Jesus. In fact, God, Jesus says for the saints, we will rule and reign with Jesus for that thousand years. But they will repopulate, and there'll be a mass amount of people at the end of that thousand years. But again, because they've been under the rule of Christ and all they've known is good things, God will still give them opportunity to rebel. And Satan will be loosed. He'll come on earth. And believe it or not, there are some people, even though they've none, known nothing but the love and rule of Jesus, will go with the devil. And then God annihilates them. And then here comes the new heavens and new earth down out of uh, heaven and we're there with God forever. So if you're a born again believer, our future is great, even though we're going through persecution. But one of the sad things, and we're gonna talk a little bit today, is God also told us that in the end, God would divide the sheep from the goats. There would be a time, and we're in it right now, that actually even people who seem to be legitimate Christians and legitimate denominations, will literally be turned over to Satan. They will become woke, and they will embrace Satan and socialism and communism and depart from the faith. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. But let's read it here, in the, first of all, in the Word of God. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, Okay, talking about the rapture. That you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. As that day of the Lord is present, let no man deceive you by any means. I mean, you understand right now, if people are listening and believing the things in the mainstream media, all they're receiving is fake news. And they are being deceived. Do you understand that? It, you are purposely being lied to, giving a slanted point of view, not hearing the whole truth. Isn't that sad? Now, there are still places like Newsmax and One American News and Victory News. There's still some legitimate. But for the most part, all you're receiving is lies and deceptions. As Donald Trump says, fake news. And that's sad, isn't it? But... God said it would happen, and it, it would happen, absolutely get in the church, and we'll look at that in just a minute, too. But that's the greatest danger for you and I is to be deceived. And remember, if you're deceived, that means that you don't know it. Someone has told you a lie, you believed it, you've embraced it, and now you're living in light of that lie. That's deception. 
You don't want that to happen. In fact, I've told people the greatest spiritual gift that you need to have in these last days, one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, is discerning the spirits. You need to be able to discern the Holy Spirit, knowing the Holy Spirit is talking to you. You need to be able to discern the demonic realm and know the, uh, be able to know what uh, uh, demons are afflicting people, their names and functions. You need to be able to discern human spirits. A person may be telling you one thing, but you discern they're lying to you. They're, uh, they're telling you corrupt things that aren't true. And again, then you need to be able to discern between good and bad angels. Remember when Lucifer fell up to a third of the angels went with him so there's many fallen angels and they try to deceive people too so one of the greatest dangers is deception well preacher how can i guard against it number one you get born again number two you get filled with the holy spirit and number three you study god's word just like jesus said in john 17 17 sanctify them through thy word thy word is truth the bible is the absolute truth there are no mistakes in the bible it's absolute truth. And if you don't go to a church that believes that, run, forced run. You got the picture? Okay. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come first, except there come the falling away. Literally, the understanding is that talking about the apostasy, the falling away from the truth of God's Bible. People will disregard the Bible. People will say the Bible's full of mistakes. Do you know all the most of the cults and isms today, false religions, do you know how they started, many of them? A fallen angel appeared to a man, we'll call him a doofus, and convinced them that the Bible was full of mistakes, and this fallen angel had new revelation that would set things straight. You know what groups I'm talking about, don't you? Okay. And they changed the Bible, the adjusted Bible, they have their own books. Well, God said that would happen, okay? The fallen away, the apostasy, the departure from the Bible is the absolute source of truth. In fact, there are even groups today, and they've always kind of been liberal churches that believe you can just make the Bible say what you want it to say. No, the Bible is absolute truth, and Holy Spirit will give you the understanding of truth, if you get born again and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. And the Holy Spirit will never tell you there's a mistake in the Word of God. In fact, the only thing the Holy Spirit's ever told me is the Bible's truth. And it's true for me, and it's true for everyone else. Do you understand that? The fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Okay, that's the Antichrist, okay? Remember, right after the church is raptured out, could happen any day, Antichrist will come on the scene. Now notice about the Antichrist, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God. Now, I told you a little bit about what would happen when he came on the scene. Here is verifying it. Him as God setteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember, the one thing that will happen pretty quickly after the church of saints are raptured out of here, Antichrist will appear. He'll get together his one world government. He will sign the seven-year peace treaty with Israel. They will build their temple. They'll be doing their worship and sacrifices. He has the deadly wound. Of course, he's always been a bad guy, but now he's literally possessed by Satan, and he stands up in the temple and says, I'm God, worship me, and then here comes officially the mark of the beast. They're trying to do it now. Get that set up for it you understand that don't you okay so i just want to tell you what i'm telling you here's what the bible verifies that's getting ready to happen okay verse five remember ye not that when i was yet with you i told you these things and now you know <clears throat> what restraineth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity remember iniquity can uh, one of the best different nations is lawlessness for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now hinders will continue to hinder until he be taken out of the way. That's talking about the Holy Spirit. Do you realize even though there's a lot of wicked things going on, still the Holy Spirit, because the church is still here, the saints. And remember, if you're really born again, when you got born again, you were regenerated by the Holy Spirit. 
So you have the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to baptize, immerse you, and be continually walking in the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5.16. But the Holy Spirit in the church is still restraining from all out evil to break out. Okay. So you know how bad it is right now? Well, once the Holy Spirit's out of here and the saints are out of here, Oh, the all will be left is the left. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked one be revealed, okay, Antichrist, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's what I told you at the end of the tribulation. <clears throat> Jesus comes back and all the saints come back. We come back with him because we're going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. He said so. Read the book of Revelation. Okay. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Okay. He's the devil's man. With all power and signs and lying wonders. <clears throat> now you understand God does miracles. There's still a gift of workings of miracles that people can receive, gifts of healings, gift of faith, words of knowledge. Uh, many of these gifts, uh, as if you're operating in them, there are miracles, healings, deliverance, signs and wonders. Okay, that's of God. Well, there's also the occult, the bad side. Okay, they can do some miraculous things too, <clears throat> but it's the power of the devil. It's counterfeit. It glorifies Satan or the person doing it. Remember, everything a genuine Christian does glorifies Jesus Christ, and it's done in his name and exalts him. Okay. But he's going to be on the scene with his Antichrist doing supernatural signs and wonders. Maybe we'll get into more of that next week. And with all deceivableness, there's that word deceive again, of unrighteousness in them that perish perish they're dying they're going to hell isn't that sad and again why do people go to hell and here it is this is see this is why deception and lies you've got to be set free from that because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved you see there's a lot of churches that don't preach the gospel well, what's the gospel the gospel first corinthians 15 is the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ the understanding that all mankind has sinned in adam and then when we get old enough to know right and wrong we sin <clears throat> the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord so we can understand that only through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, because remember when he hung on that cross, he was paying for all the sins of mankind. And with his precious blood, God said he would forgive us our sins when we repented and put our faith in Jesus, and then that precious blood would be applied to our sins, and we would become forgiven, white as snow, new creatures in Christ, all through trusting in Jesus and what he did on the cross, okay? But that has been perverted in the last time. Many churches don't preach the gospel. They preach religious rituals without being born again from above. Now, you don't hear about the blood of Jesus. Do you know there's a denomination who took the songs of the blood of Jesus out of their songbook because it was offensive to people? Oh, this seeker sensitive is from the pit of hell. We love Jesus. We sing about his blood. In fact, the Bible says we overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony, and we love not our life unto the death. That's Revelation 12, 11. That's how we defeat Satan in Jesus name and the power and authority His blood. Yes, we love the blood of Jesus. Okay. Okay, because people don't receive the truth, because you happen to have got raised in the wrong church, and you didn't find the Jesus of the Bible, and for this cause, and therefore you've rejected truth, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie or a lie. So if you reject the truth of God's word, and what God's word says Jesus has did for you in being your Savior and Lord, then you will begin to believe the lies of the WEF, World Economic Forum, of Satan and his kingdom, okay? 
that they all might be judged, literally damned, who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Remember, if you reject Jesus and the Bible, you will, then God says, okay, you don't want the truth. I'll put, I'll put a spirit of delusion over you, and now you can't know the truth. The truth means nothing to you. You don't want that to happen to you. You need to fall to your knees right now and say, Lord Jesus, I know the Bible's true. I know you died for my sins and rose again. I understand it's only your precious blood that washes away my sin, and I repent, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. Jesus, come into my heart and save me and be born again. And then you get in a church and get baptized in water. Get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You grow in the Lord. And you find out what the Bible says so you don't get deceived. And remember, some, some of the deceived people are preachers who aren't preaching the Bible. They're, 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 they're preaching critical race theory. They're, they're preaching social justice, all socialist communist things. They're teaching, teaching sexual perversion. They're, they're teaching that transgenderism is okay. They're, they're, t they're teaching that abortion, it's okay to murder sweet little boys and girls. Boy, you, you want to go to hell? You, you tell God that he made a mistake with that little boy and, and he could be a little girl or that little girl and she could be a little boy. You want to burn in the lake of fire? You bring confusion to little children. It would be better for you not to have been born that you would ever suggest anything but what God said, one man, one woman, marriage covenant, that's it. Everything else is sin. Everything else is from the pit of hell. And if you embrace that, then God will turn you over to a reprobate mind, Romans 1. And now you, you believe the lie, you love the lie, you'll shout the lie until you, get die, until you die and get thrown in the pit of hell. So I pray you're not there yet. I pray that you've accepted Jesus, the Bible. You love Jesus. You love his word. You love the blood of Jesus. You believe every word of God, and you apply it to your life. And you're in a good church that preaches that truth. Amen. But Jesus says in the last day, people would depart from the truth. Just real quickly. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now the Spirit, capital A, is talking about the Holy Spirit. Remember the Holy Spirit, the third person in the Godhead? speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Okay. The word here means the body of truth that makes up the word of God. They'll depart from the Bible, giving heed to seducing spirits. Those are the demons and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And then it describes some of the terrible things that the demons through the people teach. So you don't want to go there. Protect yourself against deception. And the only way you can do that is to embrace the word of God, being born again, having the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in you will show you what's right and what's wrong. And he'll always show you that the Bible is true. That's true of every Christian. No mistakes in the Word of God, absolute truth. And you'll be able to keep away and know when the people on the news and things are lying to you because the Holy Spirit in you will let you know. Isn't that exciting to know? Are you born again? Are you ready to go to heaven? If Jesus came today, would you be raptured out? Do you know you have a home in heaven? If not, pray with me right now. Dear God, I see it. I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and rose again. I repent of my sins right now. Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Savior and Lord of my life. I give myself to you completely, both now and forever. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the broadcast of Exceedingly Abundant Ministries in cooperation with Bethel Worship Center of Joplin, Missouri. Bethel Worship Center is located at 3125 West 20th Street in Joplin. Weekly service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and a Wednesday evening Bible study at 6.30 p.m. For more information, visit their website at BethelJoplin.org or send an email to Pastor Gary. His email is GaryColt at Yahoo.com. Please join them again next week as they continue to expound on God's truth in a relevant and practical way.